everyone, welcome back to I Heart Movies. My name is Jonathan North, and today I have another interview episode for you, this time with Ashley, aka The Movie Oracle, on YouTube. I asked Ashley to join me for a Christmas episode, so she originally came on to talk about the 2018 Netflix film The Christmas Chronicles. But as I usually do with new guests, first we did a Q&A, which basically turned into a very long chat about all things film and TV. We went on so many tangents and rabbit trails, it was probably two hours before we actually got to the movie itself. But I think that's a sign of a great discussion. Ashley and I had so much fun talking about movies, TV, anime, Disney, and so much more, so I decided to make a whole episode out of it. Hopefully you'll enjoy our conversation as much as we did. I have a few questions that I usually try to ask everybody. Okay. So, first one, pretty basic. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, like work, pets, hobbies, that kind of thing? Well, work, my work is just uh, YouTube. Um, I've actually been out of work for eight years, mm. um, which sucks. I don't recommend it. It wasn't a choice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just haven't been able to get work. So I focus all my time and energy to keep myself sane into YouTube, which luckily I make a bit of money on. And of mm-hmm. course, I now have Patreon. So thank God to the people who support me there or I really probably wouldn't be getting any content out at all. So this has basically become my work and I like it because I am my own boss. So that's mm-hmm. great. Uh, that's, that's the, that's the goal. Nobody wants a real <laughs> boss anymore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> pets, no, no pets for me. Um, haven't had a pet since I was in like the sixth grade and I had two guinea pigs since then. Nothing else. We wanted to get a dog, but my mom said we can only have a dog if it's a um, King uh, King Cavalier. It's okay. the only dog she'll allow us to have, and we can't <laughs> have cats because my brother and sister are allergic. So, mm. but all the neighbors' animals just seem to come into our yard anyway. So I guess <laughs> I'm babysitting everybody else's animals. So yay! That works. <laughs> yeah, you you get the the love and affection without without the cleanup. <laughs> Not sure about love and affection. The cats from all around the neighborhood come to suntan on our deck in the backyard. Um, That's their favorite tanning spot. And I think my neighbor who's right here, I think she is, uh, must be a very bad owner. She and her children because she has two Siberian Huskies and they have now on two separate occasions broken through the fence come into our yard and one of them got in the house. So, uh, yeah, came into the house, came into my room. I'm like, there's a husky in my bedroom right now. What the hell is going on here? Um, That would probably be about my reaction if there was a strange giant dog that just showed up in my room. (laughs) It was a weird night because we heard um, barking in the front yard and it was, it definitely sounded like the front yard, not the street. We're like, that's getting closer and so I go to open the door and the dog was right at the front door and I about had a heart attack but it jumped as well and then it went to turn around and then it came right into the house and made a beeline for my bedroom like what no no, you weren't invited no no no. and then I was just spending my entire night trying to wrangle the dog which was going nuts because it's like how did I get here and how do I get back home I'm like great and how do I contact my neighbors I don't have their number and they have um uh special locks on their gate that you can't get in to even like go and knock on the door so I'm like oh well this is this is unfortunate but I guess she heard the other dog barking and she came out she's like oh sorry they must have seen a possum like no did you not notice one of your dogs is missing (laughs) like because it's in here she's like oh really i'm like no i made that up and she's she's like in our house (laughs) oh that's that's happened to us a few times that really (laughs) yeah that's life in australia yeah we've had we've had we've been invaded by a few possums they practically live in our walls and at one point we were renovating so we had half the roof kind of open and they're just like yay party time so (laughs) Yeah, if you ever wake up to a possum in the middle of your house, uh, that's kind of scary. I don't <laughs> recommend that. They're actually quite terrifying in the middle of the night. So, yeah, don't, don't, don't do that. I wake up to a lot of animals in my house, which is weird because I live in the suburbs. That This should not be a thing. If I lived in the bush, that would probably be more normal, but I don't. But, oh, well, that's Australia, I guess. <laughs> that would be interesting. That, that would be even more 
I don't know, creepy if it was an American possum that you found in your house because they can be creepy looking. They're, they sort of toe the line between that. cute and creepy. And, but if they showed up in the middle of the night, it would be creepy. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. I uh, I posted a picture a while ago of a, a ringtail possum. So we basically have the bush tail and the ringtail. It's easy to tell because one has a very thin tail and has a white tip and it kind of curls and the other one has a bushy tail so ring tail bush tail really easy to mm-hmm. differentiate and i took a picture and i put it online and my american friend um i said look this possum got really I, i'm like i got up really close with this possum so i thought i'd take a picture and he's like that's not a possum so <laughs> yeah, it is and he goes no that's not a possum i'm like ah, uh, yes it is it's a ringtail possum and he goes no trust me i've seen possums i'm like this is an australian possum this is in america this is what australian possums look like he's like i don't believe you and then he went and googled it he's like okay according to google you're correct i'm like why would i lie about that (laughs) you you have to look it up when you have a genuine australian telling you what they are seeing with their own eyes I get that from Americans a lot. Like I say something about Australia, like um, someone, an American tried to tell me that kangaroos are an endangered species and I cracked up laughing and I'm like, (laughs) dude, no, they're freaking not. And they're like, yes, they are. I'm like, where'd you get this information? I said, I live here. They're not endangered. They're almost considered vermin because they can populate so quickly and they kind of Uh, can damage the ecosystem if they overpopulate so culling them is kind of okay in certain areas and he's like no 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 you can't because they're nearly extinct I'm like dude we eat kangaroo here and he's like no you don't you just made that up I said no I didn't it's they're high in protein and low in fat it's a it's a really good healthy meat to eat he's like nah you're just bullshitting me because I'm American I'm like you can google it if you want and then he goes he's like oh my god you eat kangaroo I'm like well I don't specifically but yes we eat kangaroo in Australia because they're not endangered yeah from what I've read it's more like deer around here because we have deer in such high populations that you can hit them with your cars and they're everywhere they can be a a menace almost. <laughs> yeah. And from what I've heard, the, the Australian equivalent is basically kangaroos. Pretty much. The, when you start to get out into more like bushland territory mm-hmm. where kangaroos kind of roam a bit more free, yeah, there have been people known to um, accidentally hit a kangaroo with their car. Um, uh, sorry to the kangaroo and sorry to those people who ended up hitting the kangaroo. Um, but yeah, that happens. I mean, there is like a subspecies of kangaroo that's like this big that people haven't even really heard of. And that's endangered, but that's not the kangaroo, you know, the one that's like on our coat of arms. So yeah, when, it's, when people just tell me facts about Australia, I'm just like, please tell me more. Tell, <laughs> tell, me, tell, tell me more. I don't know any of these things. This is, this is fascinating to me. Like I'll say people who say, um, I'll never go to Australia because it's filled with um, deadly, dangerous, dangerous animals. I'm like, well, yes, it's true. It is. But your chances of ever encountering one are like slim to none. So. <laughs> and America, most of like, America has big. deadly animals too, but they're not like crawling through our homes. <laughs> Yeah, there was there was a t- there's a video on YouTube and the video itself is absolutely stupid. I I swear nobody did any research into it, but there's a, an Australian comedian where he reacts to it and it absolutely kills me because it's like top 10 reasons why not to visit Australia. And and the things on the list I'm like these aren't things exclusive to Australia. Like one of them was the sun. And I'm just like, yes, we are the only country on the planet that has access to the sun. Yep. We're that, we're that awesome. We're that privileged. Everybody else, you're screwed. We've got the sun. Yahoo. Um, yeah, little things like that. And then they had like rip, uh, rip currents. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you could get those at any other beach in the world. You're scared of that, then just don't go out into the water. <laughs> Yeah, especially because uh, in most, uh, I don't know about other countries, but at least in uh, most Australian beaches, if uh, people who monitor the beaches are like lifeguards, if they know that there's a rip current, they'll put up flags and it's like, don't swim between these flags because there's a rip current in that location. It's like, cool, I'll be over here then. And just little things, 
one person said, um, they said snakes, spiders, fair enough. Okay. Those are a little bit more legit. Uh, I think, what did he say? Something about finding spiders or snakes, one of the two in your basement. And the comedian made a joke and I died laughing because he's like, name one Australian with a freaking basement. He's like, really? We don't do basements. We don't, it's true. We, we really don't have basements. He's mm. like, yes, Australians are always finding them in their basements and Australians are looking around like, what? We'd have to build one first <laughs> to <laughs> find spiders in them. I think number one was like a Komodo dragon. And I'm just like, they don't even live here. They're in Indonesia. I was going to say, is that even Australia? I've never heard of them being in Australia. No, they're not. You tip it, they're native to Indonesia, which is the country that's above Australia. But um, I said, yeah, if you find a Komodo dragon in Australia, uh, Call the police because I think someone has illegally imported this into the country. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, just funny listening to foreigners talk about Australia, and I'm just like, yeah, none of that's none of that's true. But thanks anyway. I mean, makes us sound more interesting. But we're like, is there anything factual <laughs> about about anything that people say? And I really don't think there is so it leads to some very interesting conversations but also leads to me hitting my head on the desk a lot (laughs) i'll give myself a concussion one of these days do you have lots of weird conversations like that with people i do and then usually with americans (laughs) that that makes sense (laughs) well i i did i did just recently have a conversation uh with someone and they were absolutely uh gobsmacked to learn that we do not celebrate Thanksgiving. And I'm like, there's like maybe nine countries in total that celebrate Thanksgiving and they're all in that part of the world. Yeah, like, each Thanksgiving is about a different thing that they're supposed to be giving thanks for. It's not like Thanksgiving is just a general thing that the whole world does. Yeah, no. And then Annie's just like, Oh, are you really cold? Because it's really cold here. And and he's like, Oh, winter. I'm like, No, we're moving. We're we're, we're moving into summer. Over here, he's like, What? And I said, Yeah, I live in a different hemisphere, so therefore we have the opposite seasons mm-hmm. to people in America. Um, and he was very confused by that. I'm like, You do realize Australia is not in America, right? And <laughs> And then I had the most interesting question where I actually had to step away from my computer to go and fathom what I had just read where um, they asked me, so is your hair really blue? And I went, um, I I tried to give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm like, "Uh, please tell me you're asking me, is this a hair or a wig? Like, please tell me that's the question and not, were you born with blue hair? Because if that was the question, I was going to be like, okay, I, I've had enough internet for one day. Thank you. That, that, um, was, that was quite interesting. What were they asking? Did they clarify? I think they were indeed asking if I was uh, born with blue hair. <laughs> Do they think that Australians are like a different species, <laughs> that they have blue hair? <laughs> we are descended from Smurfs. Uh, so yes, many of us, uh, still contain the blue gene that is, uh, found in our hair or perhaps our eyes. So yeah, maybe that's what it is. Wow. <laughs> I know some people can be kind of dumb, but it always, there's some days I'm just really surprised by what I find out that some people think about things. <laughs> oh, me too. Well, I guess we can move on to the other questions. <laughs> sure thing. Go for it. I'm sure something crazy will pop up there too. <laughs> <laughs> well, the next thing I was going to ask is how did you get into YouTube and did anyone inspire you to start doing video reviews? And like, what is your inspiration for that? Um, My channel is so eclectic. Like when somebody's like, what do you do? I'm like, oh God, here's my resume. Like, because I do so many random things on my channel, like I have several series, but I I didn't really, I didn't actually know when I started doing YouTube that um, movie YouTube has actually existed. I didn't know that was a thing. I wasn't subscribed to any, I didn't watch any, so I didn't know that. 
but I'd been someone for a very long time who everybody would kind of go to for movie advice. If there was like a sleepover going on, everybody would come and be like, I'm, I'm having a sleepover party. Um, what movies would you recommend? I'm like, well, what, what kind of stuff do you want? And they're like, oh yeah, horror. I'm like, okay, one moment. I'll grab my encyclopedia. Here we go. <laughs> um, and uh, I basically grew up in a video store because ever since I could remember, my brother was working in a video store. So that was basically where I would hang out most of the time. So I just always loved movies and everybody knew me as like the movie expert. Like we would maybe do movie games in um, school. And if people got me on my team, literally this actually happened to a guy in one of the other groups. He went, no fear. They've got Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only time in school I ever felt popular, um, which was really good to me. Actually, the entire group gave up on that challenge and they just handed me the paper and they're just like, you can just do this one. We'll just go with whatever answers you have. I'm like, sweet, we won. Um, and yeah, I would just sometimes post like, uh, I, I guess you'd call them like mini reviews, but I just was posting my thoughts about certain movies on Facebook. And then I had a friend, uh, he kind of started calling me the movie oracle because of things that I could predict would happen in films. And being that he was like, oh, and you and all the your movie wisdom, he's like, you should do movie reviews. I'm like, nah, that's, I'm like, I don't think I could actually do that on that. Like, he's like, yeah, no, you should. Cause people ask you anyway, and you do kind of do them on Facebook. I'm like, ah, uh, yeah, I don't know. He's like, yeah, and you should do a YouTube channel. I'm like, okay, that's pushing it. And then one day I guess I decided to do it and I decided to test the waters and I made a couple of, um, charmed uh, i made a charm tribute video i made a harry potter tribute video and i was like so happy about those and that was kind of me testing out like my editing skills and that was because that was the back in the day when youtube mostly consisted of tribute videos for various films and mm -hmm. tv shows like that's what i used to always watch all the time and um then it kind of i spent months preparing my first video which was um uh counting down TV shows about witches and I worked on it for so long scripting it and editing it and putting all these pieces together and, and music overlays and all this stuff and then when I did it I was just like oh my god I, I made my first video and at the time I didn't think you could have a video be a certain length of time so I actually ended up splitting it in half and making two videos and I regret that now because I realized afterwards I was fine that I could actually um, have a, a video of a certain amount of minutes because the sometimes the YouTube um, guidelines are very confusing to read. Mm. Um, and the algorithm and is confusing to figure out what it wants. <laughs> that's, that's very true. <laughs> um, and it kind of, I was very nervous at first and it took me a while before I kind of upgraded to full on reviews. And then I kind of only did them sporadically because I felt very nervous getting in front of the camera. And then I got to a point where I was just like, F it. And I actually started uh, doing more. And then it, and then I just slowly started um, trying out more things outside of reviews and, and doing so many different things on my channel. And now it's like I'm doing a million different things and it's almost like I do reviews far less now, which is true because um, sometimes it just requires a lot more uh, focus to like sit down, watch a movie, think of everything that I'm going to say about it prepare my script and at some points I'm, I'm just like oh I don't really want to watch that movie because then I'm gonna have to write a review on it so I'll just go and watch uh all 12 seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race on a loop <laughs> well I guess we can move on to the main questions that I usually ask we've only gotten to two of my questions but <laughs> oh sorry you're gonna have a field day editing that's Let's okay see. I usually ask about favorite things so what is your favorite movie, or if you can't pick one, maybe just favorite movies in general, just a few? Um, my favorite film of all time is The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. That is my number one favorite film. And I never thought my favorite film would actually be an Australian film. That one still surprises me. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, I've grown up watching that. I love it. It's campy and it has a soundtrack uh to absolutely die for i could I, I seriously i cannot tell you how many times i've watched this not even just like in my life but like this year alone <laughs> hmm. i've heard the name but i don't know anything about it 
Uh, it's about uh, three drag queens going on a cross-country trip from Sydney to Alice Springs because one of them got a job in Alice Springs and they stumble upon a lot of adversity on the way as they go back, you know, they go through more of the outback and start come across, you know, uh, the parts of Australia where people are not as accepting and um, one of them is uh, trans, uh, it actually played by Terrence Stamp. Uh, really? Yep, playing uh, trans woman Bernadette. And um, she's kind of coming into her, you know, what she wants out of life, um, trying to find love. And um, uh, we have uh, Hugo Weaving, who is kind of... in control of the whole situation who is leading them to Alice Springs because turns out he has uh, an ex-wife and a son there um but yeah he's gonna try his hand at um being a dad for the first time um because he's kind of not been present in his son's life which was an amicable decision between the parents and it's just everybody learning a lot of life lessons and, and things about themselves. And um, Guy Pierce is also one of the other drag queens who, oh my God, he looks fantastic in drag. It's not even fair. <laughs> I see him as like, there's a really buff villain in Iron Man 3. And I'm like, yeah, but he looks damn good in stilettos. That sounds That's like a, a really, a not, not even ridiculous, just a completely different kind of movie. <laughs> It is. I mean, people, it, it kind of started as, I think, like a, a bit of a cult classic. It was a hit, obviously, among uh, gay people, and I've grown up with it, so it's just, it's been amazing for me. Um, but I think, aside from just being, having those campy, over-the-top moments, um, it just, it, it hits hard um, with the emotional stories of, you know, um, acceptance and prejudice and those type of things. It, it just, there's a lot of life lessons in there and it's um, awesome. And there's some really great um, landscape shots of Australia as well. When at the film kind of ends in Kings Canyon and uh, it's a beautiful scenery shot. I mean, I, they wanted to film it at Uluru, but um, for legal reasons that uh, that wasn't going to happen. So they had to settle for Kings Canyon instead, but how old is this movie? I'm assuming it's a, been a while since you said Terrence Stamp was in it. Uh, yeah, that was 1994, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. It sounds like something that they would make today, like with the popularity of RuPaul and everything. It sounds like something that people would make today. I wouldn't have oh, thought yeah. it would be that, quite that old, but... <laughs> it was one of the few films back then that was willing to do that and, and was uh, willing to talk about trans characters. Um, you know, there was just a lot of not too much of that was going on in the early nineties. So this was mm -hmm. like a very informative film for its day. And for me personally, I think it still holds up. I mean, there are going to be people in 2020 who are being like, I don't appreciate that they hired a, cis white guy to play a trans woman that would be the modern argument but in that day it's just like be i'm just still amazed that at that time they were willing to talk about trans people at all mm -hmm. with a lot of older movies i just have to think remember the time it's made and then just go with it like it wouldn't be made that way today mm -hmm. but it wasn't made today so you can't expect the I, past to change for, for the now. I entirely agree. Like, there are some times where, you know, for context's sake, you can say something, but it, it really is important that if you look at a film that came out in the 1940s or the 1950s or whatever, you have to think of what things were kind of like at that time. Mm -hmm. So when I listen to people um, talking about a film or a TV show that say came out in the nineties and they're going, Oh my God, this show was not progressive. This didn't, I'm like for its time, mm -hmm. it was progressive, maybe not by today's standards, but at the time that was actually progressive and that kind of stuff, you know, each time one year does something, it be creates that kind of stepping stone where the next decade somebody else can kind of add to that and like push it a little further and a little further and a little mm -hmm. further but it all comes from you got to go back to like that one person who just tried something 
a little different, a little outside the box. And then that's how we get to where we are today, where we're able to showcase a lot of things that are more uh, authentic or diverse than we were um, before. But it's because at some point somebody tried Mm -hmm. and you can, you can be like, well, that was disrespectful. It's like, but they tried. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) you got to give them points for that. Well, for my next question, I think I know the answer to this, but for everybody okay. else, what is your favorite TV show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, um, uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, gee, I, I, I wonder what it could be. Uh, yeah, that's Charmed. That's, <laughs> that has, has and will always be uh, Charmed. Unless you want to get technical and say live action TV show versus animated TV show. But yeah, Charmed is my number one. Hence why I'm covered in Charmed tattoos. <laughs> well, I do. For people I have on that are more into animation, that is one of my questions. I wasn't going to ask it, but what's your favorite animated TV show? Oh, mine's One Piece. I'm an anime fan. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with One Piece. I've got a little bit of my One Piece merch over That's- that's one of those shows that I know the title of, but I have no idea what it's about. How do I explain One Piece? Um, live action shows are so much easier to explain than anime. Um, but uh, One Piece is sent in a fictional depiction of the world. It's uh, real. And there's uh, pirates and marines and there's all these different countries and stuff. And it's about, it mainly centers around this... Um, pirate uh, monkey d luffy and he wants to become king of the pirates and uh many pirates uh in the world uh want to achieve the same goal basically if you find the former king of the pirates uh hidden treasure whoever finds it which is called the one piece if you find it you become the king of the pirates so he and his crew kind of set off with that mission in mind that's his dream but each member of his crew has a different goal for themselves and he's kind of also they they want to help him achieve his goal and he wants to help them achieve their goals and that's kind of how they become such a united crew because they all have like dreams and ambitions and they just kind of bound together to help each other figure that out and meanwhile they go through all these countries and pirates are considered evil and there are plenty of bad pirates but um luffy and his crew uh they're good pair they're good pirates they're good people and they've often helped save many countries from civil wars and uh terrorists and uh um come across uh, all the nasty marines it's kind of a depiction of the world thinks that the good guys are bad guys and that the bad guys are good guys and the bad guys being the marines who are hunting down the pirates and then turns out marines are not nice people and they're led by the world government who are a bunch of racists and slave owners and there are a lot of themes in the show that kind of reflect things that have happened throughout real world history Mm -hmm. where it be um slavery racism um so many of those it's just done with different um creatures and entities and it's very it's a very emotional show it's probably it's the only show on the planet that will make you cry about a boat um that's a fact that is an actual fact i have a um top 10 emotional one piece moments on my channel it's my most viewed video on my channel and one of the number one comments you will see on that video is i can't believe i'm crying about a freaking boat (laughs) so it's it's a very hard hitting um, show, very emotional, but at the same time, it's also hilarious. And I adore the character of Monkey D. Luffy because he's someone who kind of wills himself to get stronger, even when it shouldn't be possible. But it's by sheer will and the fact that he's always fighting for something or someone, and he will never let himself lose if it means that it'll affect somebody else or his own dreams. He's, it's like, oh, look, you're going to die. And he's just like, mm, yeah, no, sorry. I disagree with you on that. I really can't die yet because you see, I have some ambitions that I wish to achieve. So until I do that, I'm sorry. You're not killing me today. And like, oh my God, I will like cheer for Luffy all day long. I'm like, I love Luffy. I love Luffy. I mean, we we have well over 900 episodes of One Piece so far, so... Oh, no. I was just going to ask, if, how many episodes <laughs> are there? 
<laughs> I mean, I mean, it has been going since like I think 1997. So we have well over 900 episodes now. Uh, yeah. Uh, but then I, again, there can be like an arc or like a fight that is going on. And that fight can last like 30 to 40 episodes. <laughs> like, like sometimes I'll, someone will be ahead of me and I'll be trying to catch up. And I'm just like, oh, I'm a bit behind. And I'm like, oh, is Luffy still fighting that dude? And they're like, yeah, Luffy's still fighting that dude. I'm like, okay, I can wait a bit longer. <laughs> that seems to be like my biggest barrier to entry with so many anime. Because... I'm somebody who doesn't want to just jump into it. Like, I want to start at the beginning. But, like, if there's 900 episodes, it's like, I can't, I don't have time to do that. It's actually really easy to get through uh, episodes of One Piece because, you know, if you go to, like, something like Crunchyroll to watch an episode, it's like, oh, look, this episode goes for 30 minutes. No, it actually doesn't. If you cut out the intro, the uh, previously on One Piece recap, and then the opening credits, and then the end credits, and then the preview of what will happen in the next episode, you've probably got like a five to ten minute episode. So if you cut all that stuff out, and you just watch the actual actual episode, it's like, oh, five to ten minutes, sweet, I can watch like a hundred episodes in a day. Um, yeah, so technically without all those things, episodes are really quite short with maybe being at a maximum of 15 minutes long. Hmm. That does sound slightly more doable. (laughs) It it is. It is. Yeah. So along the same lines, do you have any favorite animated movies? Uh, I have many favorite animated movies. Um, Alice in Wonderland is definitely, um, up there as one of my favorites. It's like, when I don't know how people define what their favorites are, but for me, one of the definitions of, for me, of what makes something my favorite is something that I can watch over and over and over and over and over again. And I won't get sick of it. That for me creates it as a, as a favorite. Unlike something mm. it's like, Oh, I love this. And then the more I watch, I'm like, mm, I love you plus each time. So maybe no, maybe I don't love you as much as I thought I did. Mm-hmm. Um, Alice in Wonderland, I, there would be times where I would just um, set it to repeat on DVD and I'd just keep it on the TV all day, go to sleep, Alice in Wonderland's still on, wake up, Alice in Wonderland is still on. <laughs> I'm like, yo! Um, aside from that, one of my, um, I don't watch it that often, but it's because I enjoy it, so I, I like to feel a bit more fresh with this one, um, is um, Atlantis the Lost Empire. That's probably mm. one of my yeah one of my favorite um disney films has one of my favorite uh it has my number one favorite uh disney well animated disney queen which is akira and um yeah i love that i think that's a very underrated underappreciated film yeah i actually just watched that like a month ago <laughs> oh yeah yeah my cousins and i watched it did you like it though yes yeah, I, I'd Yay. seen it before. We hadn't seen it in years, and we're like, let's watch Atlantis. The sequel isn't as great, but it. I did haven't some seen pretty, the sequel. <laughs> you know, they're all you know, relate you know, direct to DVD stuff. I mean, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't as great, but I did like some of the things that they did with it. Um, so overall, I mean, it's Atlantis. So as long as I have Atlantis, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. I so figure- I was loving it. With that, I'll probably watch the sequel when I get to Atlantis. When I because I'm going through all the Disney movies on the podcast, mm-hmm. I don't have a specific timeline. Just every once in a while, an episode will be focused on Disney movies, but I'm right. doing them in order. So when I get to Atlantis, I'll do the sequel because I'm going to do the sequels okay. when I get to each movie in the lineup. Will Most you also be doing TV series spinoffs? That's a, that's a better question probably but i don't know if i'll watch every episode like there's that there's like a little mermaid tv series from the 90s i don't i, I don't know, know and it's amazing all of them <laughs> maybe if i end oh, up there's liking not that it, many episodes there's not that many episodes of the little mermaid uh, tv series but i loved the tv series i actually used that as an argument the other year when um people said we're talking about the live action uh, Little Mermaid and they're like, oh my God, they cast a black woman. You can't have a black mermaid. I'm like, 
dumbest Why? argument. Like, it's a mermaid. It's it's not a real creature. Oh my god! I'm like, so why can't she be black? And then people like tried to get scientific with it, being like, she's how, under the water, and get therefore scientific. Because they're saying that you develop black skin due to um, melanin that is thanks to the sun. And if you live under the water, then you are not exposed to the sun. So therefore she should have really pale skin. I'm like, she's a f***ing mermaid. Dude, just I mean, stop it. <laughs> you could be whatever color is under the sea already. <laughs> it's so, it's so uh, dumb that exactly. people want to try and add that kind of weird scientific argument to something that is, that has no scientific bearing it's i know and, and that's why i i um mentioned um an episode of the tv series the little mermaid where the little mermaid makes a new friend and i'm like um for all of you saying that you can't have a, a person of color being a mermaid i'm like please meet like i think her name is gabriella and she was, she had brown skin and a, and a pink tail. And she was also um, deaf. She was a deaf person of color mermaid introduced in the TV series. And wow, that post really blew up. But I was just like, and here is my point. I'm like, they've already done it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so all of you kicking up a fuss going, nope, mermaids are white. And I'm like, this one ain't, but whatever. I'm like, they already did it but you can say whatever you want. And then people still trying to be like, no, but scientifically speaking, I'm like, you can't say science about something that doesn't exist. Science only applies to like real life things. You can imagine whatever you want. It's fantasy. But the TV series spinoffs for most, um, most um, Disney movies are actually pretty good. I like The Little Mermaid. I like the Aladdin TV series. I remember watching um, Aladdin when I was a kid. I don't think I knew that there was a Little Mermaid series when I was a kid, but I knew there was Aladdin, and I watched that a lot. I knew about the Little Mermaid one because um, my brother's video store used to have episodes on VHS, and the covers were really sparkly, like fish scales. It was like, wee! So I used to love getting those. Um, and I remember some of the songs, too, because there is a, a bit of um, singing. Um, and they had the Mobster Lobster. Yeah. He's a big lobster, and he's a mobster, so he's called the Mobster Lobster. It's really cool. Um, it doesn't sound yeah. scientifically accurate. <laughs> no, and he actually, I'm pretty sure he wore like a like a suit jacket and a top hat. But you know, science. Yeah. For an animated TV series, um, Hercules. I watched a few episodes of that, but I haven't watched that much. But um, yeah, they were actually pretty good with their. Um, TV spin-offs, at least I think. And then they actually had a few uh, videos where they told single part stories of certain Disney princesses. And it's called like the princess stories. I have one DVD. Um, I never did end up getting the other one. And I think it's the only time they've ever actually continued the Sleeping Beauty storyline. It's the hmm. only time that she's been introduced again um, in animation form and it's basically uh it's a sh it's like a short story and uh they have one for like her and then i think there's one for like cinderella and um ariel and jasmine um jasmine's is really good she gets two songs in that both performed by leo salonga just like in um the movies mm. so they're great and um her backstory gives us uh, her little short gives us a bit of backstory about her mom. It's kind of the only time it gets mentioned. And um, with the Sleeping Beauty one, it's her parents have gone away. And so she's kind of like in charge of the kingdom. And we, it's the only time we see her performing like princess duties. And like, I really enjoy that because, you know, you know, it's like Sleeping Beauty was, <laughs> was done a very long film. time ago. <laughs> yeah, it was done a very long time ago. So we never did a sequel or anything. So, and I always did wonder growing up, I'm like, whatever happened to Aurora, you know, once she got reunited with her parents. So I like that I got this like little short that kind of showed me she, you know, kind of had this life that she really got right into it as well and really was adapting to it. And I, I'm pretty sure the three fairies returned and they were helping her out and, it's just really nice that they did that. I'm, I'm going to find volume two on, I never did get it off eBay, but I'm going to one day. I will do it. <laughs> it's going to happen. I suppose I should probably cover them in the future too. Cause I was planning on doing like all the direct to video spinoff things. I guess 
I'm, I think I knew about those, but they weren't even in my head as something to cover on the podcast, but maybe I should at some point. Go for it. Why not? Just throw another thing on the list. <laughs> yeah. Well, at this point, my list is long enough that I'll be going on it for years. <laughs> I know how you feel. I just started a TV time series on Patreon and I currently have a list of over 300 TV shows. I plan to watch for it. (laughs) Whoops. I bet I probably would end up with a list that long if I actually sat down and wrote a list, but I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to see my list. (laughs) (laughs) I don't blame you. Well, I guess this kind of ties into another question. What was your favorite movie or cartoon or show growing up? Oh, um, honestly, the one thing that I used to watch, um, two things off the top of my head is I used to every morning before school and sometimes uh, if when it was on a different channel, a different time of day with Sailor Moon, I didn't realize as a kid that it was an anime because, you know, it was played as an early morning cartoon show, but my mornings consisted of my breakfast, my orange juice, and there goes the Sailor Moon opening theme and then going to school and at recess time, us girls would get together and we'd play Sailor Moon. And um, funny enough, I was always Sailor Mercury. Now I really can be because I have blue hair and she has blue hair. So now I really can be Sailor Mercury. A friend of mine, she always insisted on being Sailor Moon because she's blonde and Sailor Moon is blonde. She's, she's like, I have to be Sailor Moon because I'm blonde and she's blonde. And I'm like, well, I don't have, well, I do now, but at the time I'm like, well, I don't have blue hair and I'm playing Sailor Mercury and she's playing Sailor Mars and she doesn't have black hair with purple highlights. So why can't we just change it around? But no, she was determined to play the lead. She always had to be the star. <laughs> Blonde. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. She was actually a child model. That's why she was so up herself. Um <laughs> But, uh, yes, yeah, Sailor Moon was definitely uh, my go-to. That and Gargoyles. Oh, I loved Gargoyles, I loved Gargoyles as a kid. That was Such one of my favorite show. shows. It still, I somebody put all the episodes on YouTube uh, a, a couple years ago, and I'm like, oh, thank you, I'm watching them all right now. And I did, I'm like, oh, my God, this show was so advanced for its day i'm like this dealt with some really hard hitting topics i'm like good for you and i'm just like wow this this still holds up i'm like i want more i want a revival but i want the same animation i want the same animators and i want well i'm sure maybe a couple of them are dead because that's just how the world works and i also want the same voice actors i want everybody to come back and i just wanted exactly how it was but yeah i'm like couldn't get enough of um gargoyles Such there have a been a lot of revivals of shows from the 90s recently so maybe gargoyles could be in the future yeah but if they do then they're gonna do it with you know the new modern animation style like they do with everything you know my brother introduced me to thundercats and um i thought that show was awesome fun and then you know a couple years ago they're like and guess what we're bringing back the thundercats i'm like oh yay (laughs) and then i saw the animation for it i'm like no don't like it i Um, i never saw the original thundercats but i watched the show i suppose it was like 10 years ago i don't remember exactly how long ago and i really liked that and then it got canceled and then they brought it back as that cartoon when i still haven't watched the cartoon Maybe I will someday, but it just didn't look appealing. It didn't look as good as the one that I remembered watching. Yeah, my, my brother grew up because I, I think Thundercats was in the late 80s, early 90s. And so my brother was just like, this is a show I used to watch. I think you'll like it too. I'm like, okay. And then I watch He's like, what did you think? I'm like, I love it. It's so cool. <laughs> and then he, and then of course, he was also a big fan of He-Man and She-Ra, so he would get me to watch those and I was just like, I love it. And he was, he, he loved she more. Um, it's weird. People ask me a lot about films from my childhood. So often, you know, they ask about animated films and I'm just like, you seem to think that I had a normal childhood where I watched decent child 
you know, age appropriate movies. And I'm like, that's not really the case. I watched a lot of things I really shouldn't have been watching. And I'm like, and this is who I am today. So, ta da. <laughs> that, that seems to be a recurring theme with some of the people I've had on my podcast. Like, the one, my one friend, like, and my one in real life friend that I've had on the podcast, mm-hmm. her thing was she grew up watching a bunch of horror movies. <laughs> Hells yeah! <laughs> even even though she was like a, a tiny tot, and she still watched them, and now she loves those movies, even though she has nightmares about them. Aww. <laughs> yeah, she still I, loves them. I I totally relate to that. Um, from such a very early age, I was watching Death Becomes Her, and I can't even remember watching it on the TV. And I can even remember that in my great grandmother's house. And I was never scared of that film. Like for me, I was always told when I was very young that I was very mature for my age. Like intellectually, I could just grasp things that weren't in my age scope. Mm -hmm. And that was probably um, because I was always around adults. There was never anybody around me who was my age. So I kind of had to pick up on things a lot faster. So I always loved death becomes her and my brother had the big cardboard cut out um, of it in his room so I grew up on that film and even as a child I seemed to understand the campiness of it like I just understood what this film was going for and so I've always grown up quoting lines from this film with my brother and that never seemed weird and then you grow up and I'm like nah this still ain't weird and then people going oh and then you look and you like see that the film's like rated R or something. I'm like, wow, really? Although I don't think it was rated R in Australia. I think it was maybe like MA15 plus. And I'm just like, yep, that was what I was watching at like age three or four. Well, I guess we can move on to my last question that I ask everybody. And that okay. is, what is the first movie that you remember seeing in theaters? The Lion King. Okay. Yeah, I don't have to think about it. I, I've been asked that so many times that I just, it's now just common knowledge. I remember it. I don't remember everything about seeing it. I remember, I, I, I don't, I can't see it in my mind, but I definitely know I cried hysterically when Mufasa died in the cinema. And I mentioned it to my brother months ago and I said, yeah, I'm pretty sure the first movie I ever went to saw, see was The Lion King and you took me to see it. And he's like, Yeah, I felt really bad because I remember looking over when Mufasa died and you were just crying so much. And he said, so I pulled you into my lap and he's like, and I was trying to stop you from crying. I'm like, oh, you did? Oh, that's so sweet. I'm like, I don't remember any of this, but I like this part of the story. Thank you. Um, Yeah, so I just know that it was my brother who took me to see The Lion King. That was the first film I ever saw. And then I think, I think that same year, um, I think the same year I also saw um, The Swan Princess. And my father took me to see that. Um, well, not exactly took me to see it. It's more like he took me to the cinema, he put me in a chair, and then he left and uh, didn't come back until the movie was over. Great idea living a three, four year old in the cinema by themselves. That's that's brilliant. That doesn't sound like a good idea to me. Even if you didn't want to see the movie. It's not. My my father was not a good man. But I I remember, I don't remember, again, because it's so long ago, so it's not like I remember watching the whole film, but I remember, like, sitting there and I remember that uh, opening coming up and the title, like, that part I remember very well. Um, Yeah, and I think that might have been the same year. So it's weird, like, being that I know that I went to these films and I can Mm -hmm. remember knowing that I went, but it's like, do I remember actually sitting there and watching it? Not really. I think I mostly remember the Swan Princess a little more because it's tied to memories of anxiety of being like, where's dad? Where's dad? When's dad coming back? So that one sticks with me a little more. Whereas maybe I blocked out the Lion King because I was traumatized by the death of Mufasa. (laughs) Oh. It's like I don't like do it. I can't relive it. I can't relive it. Two different kinds of trauma from the first two movies <laughs> to <find> theaters. Uh, 
Okay. And yet I still managed to end up loving movies, so. That's good. <laughs> there we go. Thank you so much to Ashley for joining me on this episode of I Heart Movies. If you want more from her, I'll have her links in the description below. And of course, next time Ashley will be back. Like I said, our original plan was to talk about the Christmas Chronicles, so that's what we'll be doing in the next episode. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>